What's going on with Lightning Labs and, and Taro, Christy? I'm hearing lawsuits, which reminds me of my former employer who was sued for changing our name into something that might have just confused customers. What's going on? Yeah, so this is an odd story. So blockchain software development firm Tari Labs has sued Bitcoin infrastructure firm Lightning Labs in December for a trademark infringement over the use of the name Taro. Taro is a Lightning protocol or on top of Lightning, I think, that allows users to issue assets such as stable coins on the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's or it's an adjacent protocol. So one is a, a, a development firm named Tari and the protocol is Taro from a different company. Now, Taro was uh, created two years after Tari created its, uh, its trademark. The thing that I find a little odd about this case is that we're in a, an industry, well, a couple of things. We're in an industry where every other name sounds like every other name to me. <laughs> It's block this or poly that, and it's very easy to confuse a bunch of these things, but we've all kind of gotten used to it. We've figured things out. And what Tari's um, uh, argument is that people are going to get confused between Taro, the protocol, and Tari, the um the the um, company infrastructure. Sorry, the development firm, and. Yeah that developers aren't gonna know which one they're actually working with because they're too similar. And I think that developers are pretty smart people and if they are working on Lightning, they're gonna go to the one that is all about Lightning and not yeah. about building assets, like st um, building other assets or other, uh, you know, like uh, other things that uh, that Taro does. It's, it's yeah. they say sometimes identical goods and services I don't know. The other thing that uh, has been a bit of a, a, a bug in this is that the lawsuit um, has drawn criticism from several members of the open source community who insist that trademark enforcement has no place in free and open source software. And that's what these are, you know, supposed to be part of is this free and open source, open source software community, which is very much a live and let live kind of organization and I use the word organization very loosely too so the whole thing seems very unbitcoiny and yep yeah what I'm sure you have things to say about it George oh I have opinions the thing that you latched on there there is exactly where I wanted to go this feels very much against the ethos of what Bitcoin and all other open source stuff is all about who cares what it's called? Who cares what root vegetable it's named after, right? If anything, I think the Lightning Labs people should lean into it. Okay, fine. We won't call it taro. We'll call it carrot or we'll call it potato. We'll call it yam. Any other, you know, root vegetable just to get away from this. Why Mind not? you, met, met, met many of those those vegetables have been already taken up by uh, the uh, the degens uh, in the uh, degenerate summer a couple of years ago with all their various tokens. So who knows? Maybe they ran out of food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's uh, talk about another controversy. How about that? So everyone has been talking about Bitcoin NFTs and ordinals, but this is kind of a happy story. It seems like the Taproot Wizards Ordinal Inscription Collection, which is the, for lack of a better term, the first Bitcoin NFT project, they announced a donation of $19,000 worth of Bitcoin to the Human Rights, Foundation, Human Rights Foundation's Bitcoin Development Fund. And my understanding is that they did a lot of it with the Lightning Network. So, Christy, what do you think about that? Well, I think what's cool about this is it actually is onboarding people in a fun way to use Lightning. One of the criticisms that has always been going on with Lightning, which for people who don't know yet, is the layer um, on top of Bitcoin that enables really fast, instantaneous, free, practically free um, payments. So it's a, a separate payment rail on top of Bitcoin, and then everything goes onto the chain at the end. And so they've been building these um, ordinals or creating these ordinals and uh, and dropping them. I think they're, you, you're allowed to collect them after you do certain things. And it has encouraged people who are all about collecting uh, NFTs of whatever stripe um, to come over and try out the Lightning Network. And 
that has been very cool. They're, they're struck by all of these, you know, people are saying, oh, lightning's super, lightning's fast. But until you actually try it, right? It's hard to do, and and it's hard to it's hard to change your mind on that. And people who who are now, you know, maybe they've never thought of trying lightning. They're in, they have been inspired to do so. And hey, it raised money for a good cause. 